Today's episode is sponsored by Squarespace. There is nothing I love more than third-party companies making lenses for Fujifilm's X-Mount. I'm serious, I love that more than spring flowers, puppy dogs, lollipops, and my channel passing 67,000 subscribers. But is this new 40 millimeter f2.8 macro lens from TD Artisan any good? Let's find out. Hi everyone, welcome to pal to tech Now before I begin, let me say that I do not own the native Fujifilm 80mm macro lens. And from what I hear, it's worth every penny of its $1,200 price tag. However, not everyone has $1,200 to drop on a macro lens, but perhaps would still like to get into macro photography and have some kind of macro lens in their kit. Enter the brand new TD Artisan 40mm f2.8 macro lens. It's expected that at launch, this lens will cost anywhere from around $100 to maybe up to $150, which makes it about one-tenth of the cost of the Fuji macro. Now a quick disclaimer, TD Artisan was kind enough to send us a copy of this lens to test and review. However, like always, this review is my own opinion of this lens. I am not being paid by TD Artisan to do this review and they did not sponsor this video. However, this video is sponsored by Squarespace and I will talk about that a little later on. When I took this lens out of the box, the first thing I noticed was that it wins the strangest lens cap award, right? It has this really flat, thin lens cap, which could pretty much double as a perfect skipping stone, <laughs> right? This thing is so thin, check it out. Oops, the lens kit does not include a lens hood. The second thing I noticed was how tight the aperture ring is. If you like firm aperture rings, you are going to love this lens, but I found it a bit too tight for my personal preference, but I would far rather have that than a loose stepless aperture ring. Again, that's just my personal preference. Inside the lens, there are eight elements in seven groups with 11 aperture blades, and the aperture ranges from f2.8 all the way down to f16. It weighs about 372 grams and fits directly on Fujifilm camera's X-mount without needing an adapter. However, it is not an electronically controlled lens. You see the bottom of the lens right here? You see that? There's no contact. There's no electrical contacts at all. This is an all manual lens with all manual control and no EXIF lens data is included with the saved image. So when you open up your images taken with this lens in Lightroom or Photoshop, you'll see in the EXIF data, it simply says F 1.0 regardless of whatever aperture you used at the time you took the shot. Overall, for the price, this is a very solidly built lens with a very nice focus ring that extends the lens out to reach the one-to-one -one magnification. The markings on the lens are very clear and easy to read and the front filter size is 52 millimeters. The minimum focus distance is 17 centimeters. Now keep in mind that because the lens extends out a few more inches, you'll have an overall shorter working distance. And and although this is a macro lens, you can also use it as a regular lens. And that gives you a general walk around lens in this focal range. Overall, if you're looking for a sharp lens all the way through the aperture range, this is not the lens for you. At f2.8, there's some vignetting and the center is quite soft. I'm zoomed in here to 200%. It gets much better at f4, as you can see here. And continuing to increase in sharpness at the center at f5.6, but it is still a bit soft on the corners. Now that does improve when you get to f8, which I do think is the best aperture for this lens to get the widest range of sharpness. And here it is in the center at f16. And here's the corner at f16. Again though, overall, it's not quite as sharp as I would have liked. Chromatic aberration is not an issue with this lens and I didn't really notice any problems with that. What I really did like about the lens was the background that you were able to get when stopping down. Considering that you're using a lens that may end up being about a hundred bucks, it does a pretty good job of subject isolation when you're at f2.8. 
I did find the lens to be slightly on the cooler side with its color rendition. That wasn't a deal breaker for me because I shoot in RAW anyway, but it's something that you may want to be aware of. And because it's a macro lens, if you pair it with a program like Helicon Focus, you can use it to focus stack your images together if you're shooting at a wide open aperture with this lens. And that's the thing about shooting macro with this or any other macro lens. You have to be so careful with your depth of field. Just a tiny any little adjustment you make will completely shift the depth of field from one area to another. It is so easy to do. Still, I found this lens and being able to get much closer up a lot of fun to use. Now, that being said, would I recommend this lens for professional macro work? No. I would recommend the native Fuji lens for that. Yeah, it's 10 times the cost, but for professional work, you're going to need the optical quality of the native Fujifilm lens. But if you're a prosumer or a hobbyist or someone just wanting to try out macro photography and add a dedicated budget macro lens to your kit, and you're willing to put up with the softer image quality, the slightly cooler colors, and the working macro distance, then I think that for about 100 to 150 bucks, the TD Artisan's 40 millimeter f2.8 is a viable option to consider. As always, be sure to see other video reviews of this lens in addition to mine before you ultimately make your buying decision. The more companies that do this and generate more choice for the Fujifilm camera system, everyone wins. By the way, I would like to give a big thanks to today's video sponsor, Squarespace. Squarespace is an online platform that will help you to design, build, and publish your own website and portfolio. I now have three websites all built with Squarespace. My latest one, doneoverperfect.com, I was able to get designed and published in literally minutes because of the very simple to use admin in the Squarespace control panel. Look at how easy it was for me to drop my Sean Tucker interview right onto the web page, and the other controls are exactly like this as well. Whether you're inserting images, text, headlines or whatever. They have a great selection of designs to choose from and they're optimized for all screen sizes from large desktop monitors all the way down to mobile devices. And they've agreed to partner with this channel to offer you a free trial and 10% off your first purchase. So start your free trial today at squarespace.com slash pal to tech. And with that, I wanna thank you for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful or at least entertaining, right? And if you did, be sure to give it the like and subscribe. I will see all of you in another video again very soon. Take care. This thing is so thin. Check it out. Oops. This thing is so thin. All right, try it again.